Hey everybody and welcome back to the YouTube channel. So I have been a busy handyman and I have been working on my wood floor situation. So I'm on the stair steps right now and right here is where it switches from one to the next. So I decided I was just going to go a clear coat and stick with that orangey amber color because it's the natural color of the wood. If I tried to like whitewash it or gray it down at all to something more modern, it's not going to match any of the woodwork in the house and I'm not up for stripping everything. Doing the floors, like I said, was super labor intensive. These stairs were very slow going because there's this wood trim up on the side. So I had to do the riser, which is the back part. I had to do the step, do the bull nose edge and go along here step by step by step. Working on the wood floors themselves was a lot of work, but definitely the reward is worth it. So I can still see just a slight bit of either years of wear or the adhesive. So I'm gonna hit that real lightly with a sander. I'm not going for a new wood floor look. So now it's been a few weeks and a few other projects and I have got my staircase all completely done and I started in on the living room floor. And let me tell you, the living room floor is a totally different story than what went on on the second story of this house. The reason being, I stripped the living room floor many years ago and I coated it with a Verithane wood uh, for floors varnish. And I think I did two or three coats on it. The Zep stripper was not working on it. I strapped on my knee pads. I got on my hands and knees after doing like six test spots with the Zep. I started scraping it with the hand scraper. So if you've ever looked into um, hand scraped floors, a lot of people like a rough texture to their smooth, nice new floor. And it's more or less scraping off that top layer um, unevenly and kind of opening it up instead of a smooth, plain finish uh, wood. My reason for planing it or scraping it with a hand scraper was to get through my many layers of varnish. This living room is a double room. It's the whole width of the front of the house. And I think it's like 14 by 30 maybe. It's huge and very, very labor intensive. Now, the reason I didn't want to rent a sander is you only get it for four hours. Um, it's a lot of dust and most of the rest of the house is done. And I figured if I did it that way, I could keep things to a minimum and I got a heck of a workout over it. <laughs> I probably even lost five pounds. I'm in great shape now. So here's some video clips of what's going on. And here's the staircase all finished. It turned out really good. I did not over sand anything in the center. So it's got that nice aged finish instead of making it look like it's stripped. Let me turn this around and show you the rest of it. Okay, so I have been back at my wood floor and it's coming along nicely. This main part, living room, dining room combo, was previously sanded with a drum sander and stained. I think I did a dark walnut 
it was very dark. And the reason I was doing that, I was trying to hide all these color variations and it didn't work. What I ended up doing was second coating my polyurethane and within a year, the top layer of polyurethane was separating from the first layer and the original floor. Um, it was not a no sand between coats product and it failed. Um, I believe that one was Varathane wood floor varnish. I'm using Minwax Poly for floors and this is um, a satin finish that I'm using. If you look at the previous rooms I've done, you can see the final result, but I'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, this says that it helps provide um, that natural amber color, which is what we're getting here. Now this is wet, so it looks quite dark. Um, I'm gonna work myself out of the room, come back, it normally it dries in three to four hours, and then you can second coat it up to 12 hours. So this will get two coats today. I did the staircase as you saw. So this old floor has quite often had a rug in the center. So I tried to buff and sand a little bit. Um, even with the belt sander, I can still see a slight variation in color. And any stain when I previously stained really emphasize that. Just look at this color difference, what goes on here. So if you're to put a stain on this to get away from that amber color, if you're doing this yourself, um, I did it on my 1950s ranch home um, a year and a half, two years ago, and a lot of people don't like that. You're gonna have to put a stain on it um, to give it a brown color or a gray color to get away from that. Some people are even using a propane torch and burning the top layer to give it um, a little different look. Because I have like scratches here that held the stain previously, that is gonna give me that look um, along with the natural color. Now I will say um, two things I have going for me on this project that I did 15 years ago, uh, knowledge. <laughs> I have done this on a few houses. I have done teak oil. I've done polyurethane. I've done um, tongue oil, which was really nice. The teak oil actually isn't four floors, and it didn't harden real great. It stayed a little bit gummy. Um, the other thing is, when I did this floor, I used a synthetic applicator pad. It basically went on like a mop. At the time, I thought, oh, that's a real great deal. It'll save my knees. Well, it's better to just get yourself a pair of knee pads that are padded on the bottom to protect yourself. Uh, shuffle around, and you'll get it done in no time because this really works it in. And the other thing is to make sure you shop back really well and then your creases or gaps like this will be clean and then you'll be filling them in with polyurethane as you go so this is the progress i've made in probably 15 minutes with interruptions you can get an entire room done pretty quickly so here is my first coat all entirely spread out and I'll give you another shot of it after it dries and when I'm here to second coat it. Second coat is going on. First coat is all dry. Look at that. Okay, here's the final coat. All wet. It'll sit here and dry for two or three days before we start moving any furniture in on it. Light traffic is okay after a little while. But because we're having the heat set at a low temperature, I want it to give it a long time to cure nice and hard. Well, it is the next day after drying my second coat. Um, the floor feels mostly dry, but I don't really want to go walking on it just yet. Because when I put my second coat on, course it was a little tacky still and my sock fuzz was sticking to it. I don't want any permanent issues to deal with. Isn't that nice? It is so rich and 
then the little bit of like staining and age, it just looks really nice. Of course, right now I got the curtains and everything all closed up, but it is not near as orange looking as it was when it was wet. So it has been another day. Well, the floor is dried nicely. It's been about 48 hours since it's dry. There was no tackiness today at all. I really am liking the way it's looking. And it is definitely true to color um, throughout the rest of the house. I like it, it's beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and move on with our decorating. You see I got a Christmas tree project going on. And um, yeah, it's just gonna be beautiful. So now that my room is all done and complete, that is it for my wood floors for this house. I can get my register covers back on, I can go around and uh, bottom paint the rest of my trim around the room and start moving in furniture. Now they recommend seven to 10 days on rugs. Uh, we went maybe five days before we started putting a rug at the front door. It's our main access and it's winter time now. So we gotta try to keep things clean it's sweeping up nicely, it's cleaning up nicely, and I'm super happy with it. So this is two coats with the Minwax floor finish in satin, and you can easily do this without having to rent a sander or hire workers to come into your house. It has um, lightened up the smell a lot in the five days now, and the finished look is amazing. So thanks for joining us in another home renovation project, everybody. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, share it, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.